Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're your shortcut, uh, cutting through the noise to get straight to what's really moving the needle in tech. Today, we're diving into something set to seriously simplify server-side JavaScript development. That's the UnJS ecosystem, and specifically, it's toolkit nitro.js. Think about all those headaches, right? Configuration, juggling deployment targets, different environments, it's a lot. Our mission today, show you how these tools are, well, carrying down those walls, offering some genuinely surprising solutions and insights. Ready? Let's get into it. Absolutely. You know, the first thing to grasp about UnJS is that it isn't just one library. It's bigger. It's more like a philosophy, really, embodied in uh, over 50 interconnected JavaScript packages. The core idea is building these high-quality, single-purpose utilities. They're designed from the ground up to be collaborative, consistent, and importantly, compatible. They just work together nicely. Okay, over 50 packages, though. Doesn't that sound like it can get complicated fast? Trying to figure out what connects to what. That's a fair point, and they've thought about that. They recently introduced a visual tool called UnJS Relations. It's actually pretty neat. It helps everyone, newcomers and even seasoned devs, easily see how key pieces like, say, Nitro and H3 fit together in the bigger picture, makes navigating the ecosystem much clearer. Right, so NJS is the foundation, the whole collection. Yeah. And then Nitro.js sits within that, kind of like the, uh, the star player for the server-side stuff. You could say that, yeah. It gained fame as the server engine behind Next Version 3, which many people know. But it's also completely capable as a standalone API server. Very robust. And it packs some serious features, from what I understand, like uh, zero configuration to start. That includes TypeScript support right out of the box. Absolutely. That alone must save developers tons of setup time. Oh, absolutely. That zero config aspect is a huge draw. But I think the real game changer seems to be this universal deployment idea. You write your server code once, and then you can deploy it almost anywhere. <laughs> Node.js, browsers, serverless like Vercel, Cloudflare, AWS Lambda, Netlify. Exactly. It automatically detects the environment it's running in and adapts the output. That's incredible. It's not just convenient. It feels like future-proofing your work. It really is. And for the day-to-day -day coding experience, yeah. file system-based routing. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw that. You just drop a file in an AP or routes folder and boom, it's a live endpoint. Pretty much. No more complex route definition files to manage, you know, no. to just maps directly. Super intuitive. And what about performance and workflow? Built-in caching for high performance with options for different storage backends, plus hot module reloading. HMR always loved that for a tight feedback loop. Makes coding feel almost instantaneous. Yeah, and add auto imports and tree shaking to that. It keeps your code clean, less boilerplate, smaller bundles, very efficient. Okay, so let's connect Nitro back to that broader UNJS ecosystem you mentioned. How does it leverage those other pieces? Right, Nitro's power doesn't come from nowhere. It's built directly on top of other key UNJS libraries. The main one is H3, that's ENJS's minimal high performance HTTP framework. Think of it as a really modern streamlined alternative to something like express.js. H3, so it's designed for speed. Yeah. Especially in places like serverless. Precisely. Its minimal design is key. Every millisecond counts there. But Nitro also pulls in other UnJS tools. There's unstorage, for instance, super flexible key value storage, great for caching or managing simple data. Okay. And a fetch. It's like a smarter fetch API. It handles things like retries, caching integration, even JSON parsing automatically. Reduces a lot of common network code. Oh, nice. Oh, that's boilerplate again. Exactly. And then there's unimport. This one's clever. It handles auto-importing of your utilities and components across the project. Yeah. So you're almost never writing manual import statements. It just makes things available where you need them. That sounds dangerously convenient, like magic. It feels a bit like it sometimes. And performance-wise, Nitro is fast by default because of H3, but you can optimize further by, you know, sticking to best practices, avoiding things that cause overhead, like relying too much on dynamic types or passing around huge arrays that need deep copying. Gotcha. Any cool real-world uses you've seen? Yeah. A neat example is using it for dynamic serverless image generation, like creating custom banners on the fly just by hitting a specific URL. Shows off its flexibility and performance in a practical way. Okay, so pulling this all together, UnJS and Nitro.js sound like they genuinely streamline server-side JavaScript. Yeah. Giving you flexibility, performance, just a better developer experience overall. That's the core value, yes. It, it abstracts away so much of the environmental complexity, the configuration nightmares. It provides these powerful uh, building blocks that just work together so you can really focus your energy on your application's actual logic. Build smarter, not harder, you know? Makes sense. Which really leaves us, and you listening, with a final thought to chew on. 
How will you use these incredibly flexible, powerful tools like NGS and Nitro to build your next application faster, more efficiently, and maybe push some boundaries on the server side?